Carmelo. I'll talk a bit about what the work that's been done in uh, X world uh, in the last release cycle. Um, so first, a uh, few words about uh, the X team. It consists of about three people who should <laughs> touch pretty much. Okay. Is better. Okay. Um, so there are f a few people who, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> who touch uh, quite a broad spectrum of the stack, and a few more people who uh, co focus on specific packages uh, like compis or specific drivers. Um, Overall, this means there are over 1,200 open bugs and many packages and various upstream mailing lists that we need to follow to keep track of all the work that's going on. Uh, so a few words about the status in Lenny. Uh, so there was a lot of work before Lenny to almost get rid of the config file by default. And the last thing that was there uh, was the keyboard layout. And so now we remove that even. Uh, so Lenny also introduced uh, RNR 1.2 for the major drivers. And uh, there was some transition from an old acceleration architecture to a new one which was uh, starting at that time and uh, which was done for Intel and Radeon was ongoing. And so what's, where are we now? Uh, so the input world has been completely changed once again uh, with everything hot plugged and door.conf is completely gone. Um, there are some more changes to the to the uh, to the Excel uh, frameworks uh, for better render acceleration, and uh, so we had a sort of free driver for Nvidia, which was used to be maintained by Nvidia people for basically just basic mod setting and no acceleration at all. And um, now we managed to get uh, the nouveau driver integrated in Squeeze, which will be used by default for NVIDIA hardware, and which uh, does not yet allow 3D Excel, but uh, has better mod setting and, uh, and uh, 2D acceleration than than the NV, and which doesn't have the uh, issues of, I mean, there was a very, very old RC bug on the NV driver about how it was obfuscated and not really source code. Um, also, one important bit of work was moving uh, the mode setting from the X drivers to the kernel. And so now this is done in Squeeze for uh, all three major drivers. And well, this was quite a bit of work by Keith and uh, other people uh, at Intel, Red Hat, and AMD, and uh, others. And uh, also in Squeeze, uh, the Debian installer is now using X instead of using direct FB. Uh, for the graphical installer. So this was, uh, I mean, this, is, this means basically that we don't have to maintain a separate backend for GTK and Cairo and stuff like this for, uh, for DirectFB and everything is just using X11 like in the normal system. And th this work was surprisingly easy. I mean, it just was adding a new pass to build a UDEB for the 
for a few packages and it just worked. So uh, some words about input. Uh, so before we have we had just one core pointer and one core keyboard, and uh, well, you couldn't have uh, various um, easily uh, input various input drivers hot plugged and just work. So this was changed so that we we using uh, UDEV to get uh, drive, to get the the list of devices and to just add them to the server at runtime. And so this meant some changes to the configuration stuff. So instead of having uh, static input device sections, you can just say, OK, uh, every time I, had, uh, I, I see a touchpad, I set these options, I use this driver, and it just works when you, uh, uh, OK, you don't really hot plug a touchpad, but even if you hot plug a um, a tablet or a keyboard or stuff like this, you can just, okay, this just works. Uh, there was also a new API to set options like this uh, at runtime, which is used by various uh, front ends. Okay, now on the hot, on the output side, uh, the mode setting code was moved to the kernel. This means instead of doing all the work in, in X in user space, uh, X just took, uh, the X driver just talked to the kernel via, via uh, a new API, which is uh, <coughs> basically similar to the r and API. And uh, this means we get uh, for free, a native mode frame buffer for the console, and we get we can play with other stuff than X because you can just now that you have an API to talk to the kernel to set modes and uh, create buffers and stuff like this, um, you can have other display servers without so much so much uh, work. Uh, in user space. Uh, this means you can more easily have uh, uh, HDMI, audio, and stuff like this, and new uh, uh, new connector types, uh, which work in uh, in KMS, which didn't work uh, before in UMS. Uh, so this was uh, the, the work that was done before that was to add uh, memory managers to the to the kernel because uh, you need to have a unified API to manage uh, video memory instead of having statically allocated some space for uh, 2D pixel map and some space for 3D textures and stuff like this. Uh, the kernel now has a, a memory manager for video memory. So uh, there are basically two backends for this one for which is used for Intel and uh, others for um, Radeon and Nouveau, um, and VMware, I believe. Uh, now, I'll talk a bit about the versions of the different packages that you were using in Squeeze. So the kernel team decided last uh, uh, at in Portland last year, I think that they were going to use uh, 2632, um, and initially we were supposed to freeze, I believe, in March or uh, beginning of this year. So at the time, the uh, the versions of packages were decided uh, based on that, and so we are using. X server 1.7, which was released, I don't know, uh, Christmas or was it before? I don't know. Before. <laughs> um, and Mesa 7.7 was the stable branch at the time. Now I think it's replaced by 7.8. And 
Intel is released every three months, and now in Lenny we have in Squeeze we have 2.9, and the current version is 2.12, uh, which means we are quite a lot of stuff that we are missing. And uh, Radeon basically is uh, it the latest release. Um, so for the kernel, actually. Uh, the graphics stack is the one from 2 33 uh, There was, uh, because that's where Nouveau was introduced, that's where uh, I think Radeon was a lot um, s more stable, and Intel had a lot of bug fixes too, and other distros are using also this stuff, so this means they're uh, less work than using the older version. So Mesa is basically the same version as six months ago because, well, we don't have anyone specifically working on that. And it's quite a beast. It includes all the 3D drivers plus the core of the uh, GL library. And it's quite hard to keep track of it. and keep track of regressions and stuff like this, and without anyone working specifically on that, then we're it's quite hard to to keep up. Uh, Intel will probably move to, to 12 uh, soon because, well, that has a lot of bug fixes and, <laughs> and well, also better support for the newer uh, hardware. Uh, so, yeah, and Kit will release the server 1.9 this month, next week. Okay. There are some RCs in experimental, but hopefully we'll see the the new release soon. But hey, w if you want to keep see that sooner, then we welcome the help. Um, so a few words about the upgrade path from, from Lenny to Squeeze. Uh, there is the interaction with uh, kernel mode setting, which means that you need a new kernel. And the fact that we are using UDEV means you need a new UDEV, which means you need a new kernel as well. So basically, if you upgrade X, uh, you can't really keep your old kernel. So this will have to be documented, and there's no really good way around that. So, <laughs> but I think you have anyways will require the, the, that you reboot on the new kernel anyway. Um, and until a few, uh, until last week, I think, if you tried to dist upgrade from Lenny to Squeeze, then apt would decide to remove all of X because there was uh, some uh, ABI change with between the core server and the drivers and well the package manager decided it was a good idea to just remove the server and the driver and do the upgrade. So with some help from the apt people we managed to work around that with some more conflicts and this should be fixed. And I think Aptitude is still doing the wrong thing <laughs> and, <laughs> and removing st stuff on upgrade. We had the same problem with the uh, edge tool any, I think. And it was, I mean, hopefully it will fi be fixed for the, for the next release and we won't need so many conflicts. Um, so I talked about about uh, I talked about Intel Radeon and NV drivers and basically the rest is unmaintained uh, I think open Chrome is still maintained upstream sort of but I don't know uh, I don't follow that it's n not on x.org and I don't have the hardware so it would be nice to have a maintainer for that stuff and the rest of the drivers are as unmaintained in Debian as they are upstream, so they they are kept building, but 
I don't know if anybody tests them. Uh, so if you have if you have other hardware, then your help would be appreciated to make sure that this still works. So um, I mentioned that we have quite a lot of bugs and quite few people. So how can you help? Um, well, the first step is uh, to file good bugs when you have issues with uh, with X. Uh, First, use report bug to include all the information that is needed for the uh, uh, from the bug script, and it's important that you try the, list, uh, the latest code to make sure that the issue is not yet fixed, and that you file the bug upstream as well because usually there will be some uh, back and forth between upstream and and the bug reporters to make to test stuff and get some more information. And so we can't really just forward the bug and forget about them. We need to have some, I mean, it's, it's easier if the bug submitter files the bug upstream uh, directly. And uh, uh, it's important that uh, to be as specific as possible when reporting a bug about how to reproduce it, what are the symptoms, and uh, what software you're running, and stuff like this to make sure to reduce uh, 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 the need for back and forth and to um, make it easier for upstream to reproduce because if they can reproduce then usually the bug gets fixed a lot faster. And uh, one thing that is really really needed for X is to have some more up-to-date documentation. There are some old stuff and uh, people refer to old stuff and there have been a lot of changes in the last year and uh, this is not always included in in the documentation so that was been good to have some more uh, up-to-date stuff. Um, and finally, we need some help to triage the, all the bugs that we have open. Uh, to make sure that uh, they have as much information as possible, that uh, some of for some of them that we write patches and send them upstream, or uh, or ask people to test again and report the bug upstream, uh, and this is not really doable for two or three people with uh, 1,200 bugs. Um, so there are, there are some hard bugs and some complicated code and stuff like this in X, but not all of it is like this. There are some bugs that are already fixed or easily reproducible, where uh, writing a patch is not too hard, or uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of bugs that are just user error that need to be uh, explained. and well, once we're done with the uh, once we are done with all the the bugs on the BTS, then uh, there are many more on <laughs> bugs on uh, X.org bugzilla. Uh, right. So, any questions? Christian, thank you very much, Julian. Um, questions? Stand back a little bit from the. Uh, okay, do you hear me? Okay, uh, yeah, Christian Perrier speaking. Uh, that's not a question actually. I'm completely amazed by the work done by the X Strikes Force. Only these three people, you know, and apparently it's very hard to work on X. So nobody is coming helping them and. This guy over there, he worked on one week, and in one week, he integrated X in the Debian installer. So it's very easy to work on X. So it's, it's really a cry for help, because these guys are dying, you know. <laughs> really, really, we discussed with Julian. These guys are dying. And if we don't do anything, we won't have X anymore in Debian. So instead of Maybe filing... Maybe that's a good thing. I mean... 
maybe if that's we a good replace thing. X with something else. <laughs> yeah, for the beige box, we don't need X, maybe. I counted 139 ITP bug reports out of 800 mails in Debian Devel for the last four weeks. So I think in some way we are driving crazy. And I think we are driving so crazy that our core packages, just like this one, X, everybody has X on your computer, nearly everybody. <laughs> it's only three people and 1,200 bugs. Think about it. Maybe you have an answer? An answer to? I, I think we pretty much can all agree. I think we pretty much can all agree that uh, X is pretty critical. <laughs> I don't know, we don't have any other alternatives, right? Well, at this point, I, I don't think so, yeah. Not really. Um, so, I have a, qu oh, here. Yeah, I was just sort of curious, BDO. Um, sort of curious from a strategic standpoint for coping with the open bug logs and so forth. Um, with a lot of the other things that I help to maintain outside of X, um, particularly the complicated things, GNU Radio is a good example, but there are others. Um, the thing that I've done that's helped me the most with the bug situation has actually been to be much more rabid about closely tracking upstream's release processes and trying to minimize the lag time between an upstream release and things showing up in unstable. And I understand because I've been here through all of the history why there has been you know, more inertia around putting new versions of X into unstable and there have certainly been some interesting situations in the past. But when I look at this, I wonder if we aren't somehow mistakenly making lots of extra work for ourselves if we are you know, still talking about and using a 1.7 server when 1.8's been out for six months and 1.9 is about to release and similarly with the various drivers and the, the other packages. And you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just curious, you know, what you're thinking on this is strategically not I'm not trying to you know yeah. pick on a particular version of a particular package but I wonder if strategically it might be smarter for us to try and you know stay as close as possible to upstream so that there's sort of the minimum distinction between the code we're trying to to make stable and the code that they're trying to improve so that you know I if we ended up in a situation where lots of the open bugs you know, turned out to already have been fixed by something upstream and someone just has to discover that in triage, that, that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. And I, I don't know what you're thinking on this is. I think in most of the cases we are in the situation where, where uh, the bugs just need to be triaged and, and uh, are mostly already fixed. Uh, the problem we have is, uh, okay, so first, for most of the release cycle, uh, I've been trying to follow upstream quite closely and uh, upload releases uh, quite soon after the their release. Um, uh, I've stopped doing that uh, after 1.7 because, well, the freeze was approaching and there were uh, quite some bugs in the initial 1.x server, 1.8. And uh, uh, maybe they are fixed now. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, um, yeah, um, but yeah, w when we are approaching a freeze, or we are supposed to be approaching a freeze, uh, uh, also I s stopped doing. Um, I pretty much stopped doing X work uh, in Debian for a few months last year, and well, nobody took it up. So, so you asked a really, I mean, you asked a. Is this back? Is the volume back up on this? Okay. You asked a really interesting question, which is, you know, when we're getting close to a freeze, when should you upload some new major thing, and when should you not? And I always find myself a little conflicted about this because, on one hand, it's very tempting when you get to a freeze to not want to introduce major changes at the last minute. On the other hand, when you get close to a freeze, you're getting close to a point where the bits that are in uh, testing are the ones you're going to have to live with for a stable support cycle. And so 
Um, this is one of those things where I think we have to keep asking that question and we have to keep watching when the freeze dates are really going to be and thinking about and comparing those to where the various up re upstream release points are. Um, it's certainly a huge challenge when we allow a freeze to, to drag on or to yeah. be delayed you know, by some number of months because then we end up in the situation where a decision that seemed good in January, February is not so good in yes. August. But um, I, you, you ask a really good question. I don't know the answer, but I tend personally to be more aggressive about making sure I'm as close as possible to upstream when we get close to a freeze point because I know I'm going to spend the next however many years having to find and fix problems there and, and being as close as possible to where you know upstream's brain is at that moment has always seemed to be a more successful strategy to me. Yeah, this is, this is I believe, why we're, uh, we'll move to a 2.12 Intel driver soon because, well, the 2.10 didn't have many changes apart from re removing the user mode setting code, which if it's not used by default anyway, having it doesn't hurt much. Uh, it even helps some people for whom kernel mode setting is not working so well. Uh, and I think 2.11 had a few regressions because I'm trying to, I mean, we're trying to track also uh, the upstream break tracker and see what kind of regressions there are because there are always regress regressions in your release and we're trying to make a, a decision ba based on that uh, and so we are we have uh, 2.12 in, in experimental for some for about a month now I think since it's released basically and so I we usually ask people who have trouble with 2.9 whether it's fixed or in 2.12 or not. And so far the answer seems to be yes. So that's why we're moving to it soon. And yeah, uh, the problem of living with the with the ver some version some fixed version in stable has been quite a problem with uh, Lenny because. There is some specific Intel series of chips that, well, apparently had lockups for some reason, uh, like every day or every week or whatever, and <laughs> and that was a problem with the driver we have in Lenny, and I don't know whether whether it was fixed later, and I mean apparently it's fixed now, but I don't know when, and I don't know. Um, does it make sense to freeze the the, the X-related packages at the same time as the rest of Debian? Um, it's a relatively small group of extremely complicated packages, <coughs> so perhaps it makes more sense to sort of freeze it much closer to the overall freeze date than everything else. Uh, it's also a set of packages where uh, we have regressions with every release, and which are used by a lot of people, and so. It's hard to say that. I mean, we we need some time between uh, uploading a, uh, some version to the archive and knowing whether it's good enough or not. I mean, basically, when you upload a new driver, you know basically from the bug from the bug opening rate in the next month or so, uh, you know whether it's relatively good or not. But so frequently um, that the code needs to work on the current hardware because nobody's using the hardware that's a few generations out of date. Um, uh, unfortunately, but, but well people do as well. But which, which basically, if you're using needed. new hardware, then don't use Debian stable. Well. <laughs> Um, my name is Ben Armstrong. I'm, uh, I lead the Debian EPC team. And I wonder if uh, you, you said you need more triage and better um, uh, bug reporting if groups like ours that care for a particular aspect of a particular hardware platform could be 
being a little bit more useful to the X Strike Force by uh, encouraging our users and and you know educating them how to to make these bug reports um, rather than just leaving it to the ad hoc individual efforts of yes of all the that, users. That would right. probably be quite useful. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll make an effort to do that. Um, actually, let me follow up on that point. Um, one of the things that I think, as a user of X, that is really, really difficult, is that it's really hard as a user to track down bugs. Because when there's a bug in X, your, your whole system goes away. Your whole workspace goes away. So the normal ways that a user, well, at least for me, am able to figure out what's wrong doesn't work. So if I think that the most important thing that the X project needs in terms of getting better feedback as to what's going on and better characterization of bugs is some sort of, um, well, obviously some sort of help page to help figure out how to debug it, but also if there was some sort of system, well, there are things like um, X and X or whatever, the, whatever those packages are, but if there were sort of step-by-step -step ways that you could help guide people through trying to replicate what the bug is without necessarily totally disrupting their their workflow mm -hmm. to have to like you know restart X you know ten times or whatever to try to figure out what the problem is but I mean maybe that's just something fundamental to to X being the display you know what's yeah. working on your display but if there was a way to get to that easier I think it would be easier for users to help Contribute yeah, that. basically, when you debug X, you have to connect from a different machine over SSH, and well, many people don't. Do or do virtual that, so. terminals, or whatever. But no, for GDB from a virtual te terminal won't work because, well, when you're switching uh, virtual te terminals, you're sending a signal to X, and if it's blocked in the debugger, then. Would it be um, wise for me at this point to be directing some of the more um, capable uh, users to the experimental version of X if, say, they were uh, unable to resume from a hibernate or something like that that might conceivably be related to X? Or, mm. is, it, or is that more likely that, to that's be That's more likely kernel? to be a kernel problem. Right in the kernel? Uh, or does there was some problem with doesn't hibernation. doesn't yeah. screen when, when they come out of a suspend? That's probably a kernel. That's also kernel level thing. I mean See, and it's hard for me to know because you know you get a black screen for well both of these things, so you're thinking, is this X? The thing, is, the the people who work on this stack are the same whether it's in X or in the kernel. Yeah. This is Keith team. This is the uh, people at Red Hat or AMD or whatever. But this is the same the same groups. So whether the bug is filed against X or the kernel can be reassigned. It's not, not really. No problem. Okay. It's using the same bugzilla upstream and not really. Uh, so one of the things that you mentioned um, was the problem with regressions. And I know I've seen it on lots of hardware that suddenly stops working. I is there any movement upstream to become better uh, at testing? I know it's one of the hugest problems because you need so much hardware, but uh, Keith probably will address this. <laughs> <laughs> I see. <laughs> Um, my team at Intel, uh, for the 2.12 release, I've changed the process there uh, so that uh, our bug triage process uh, within, within the Intel team is to focus on regressions. And every other bug is a lower priority than a regression. And I think the results in the 2.12 release were pretty positive in that regard. I don't think we have any, any known regressions in 2.12 from 2.11. Now, 2.11 had I think regressions 2.11 had a few regressions. Right. And so rendering we stuff. Um. And we were working on those. Um, the other thing is that um, the kernel is where most of the difficult hardware manipulation and very hardware specific manipulation comes. And if we're talking about releasing a 2.6.33 based kernel stack, that's, that's a kernel stack that can't support current laptops. Yes. Um, and it would be nice to know how we can release a version. But apparently 2.6.35 two still has problem with current laptops. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, B Dale's laptop is ancient, um, and so <laughs> we should. Um, there are there will be fixes in two six thirty five point one that should fix the current HP Iron Lake laptops at least okay. the 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 Intel HD graphics, um, and those should be back portable to two six thirty three quite easily. Uh, more importantly for the, EP the EPC crowd is that uh, the 2635 kernel release has a tiny little patch that uh, keeps the 945 laptops from locking up, especially the Atom-based uh, Atom uh, 945 Yeah, this laptops. one was backported to the two seats kernel. The one that was released last week? The fix from Dave? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm trying to follow some yeah. some of the more <laughs> important fixes. This is like a, a two-line fix. It's like yes. the, the default mode for the 945 was that if the if the G, if the uh, GMCH had gone into a lower power mode, it would just not do writes to memory. It was like the you know hurt me harder bit, <laughs> <laughs> except we didn't use the word hurt. <laughs> and it's like, why would the hardware have a mode that was like? Just don't write to memory. Yeah. Jeez. And is it possible that this particular bug was also in the UMS code before, and that's what? Oh the yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. We, yeah. This this okay, hardware so has never this had this mode. because we had many lockups in the nine forty five in Lenny, and yeah, for the last five years. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm hoping that will make that go away. Um, the X server one point nine release is coming out in a week and a half. Um, I don't have in Bugzilla at this point uh, ones that are marked as regressions because I'm not getting a lot of testing. Yeah. Um, what I would like to see in experimental is instead of experimental drivers um, and an experimental server that don't work together, yeah. um, I would like to figure out a way where we can have either a alternate repository or some mechanism where I can say, I'm running Debian and I want to test the current RC series so that I can make sure that the 1.9 release is going to work on my laptop. Yes, that would be quite useful because w right now we have the choice of having, uh, so uploading a new driver to experimental built against the unstable server, uh, which means people can test whether the driver is improving stuff for them, or we can have it built against the experimental X server, which means they need to upgrade the whole stack. And right. Um, we don't really have. Yeah, we, there is only one experimental version. So. Yeah. Do do we need a different? Do we need a different repository, or do we just need to make it so that the experimental versions are only work with the experimental versions? You update everything all at I once. I think it would be useful to have multiple repositories to, I mean, to be able to to mix and match. Well, the, the trouble with making experimental being drivers against the new uh, new drivers against the new server is that you can't test to see if the new driver that's going to go into squeeze is yeah. going to work. Yeah. So how do I get how do I get people to test my 1.9 RC server in Debian? I think we need a. Uh, no, I mean. At this point, we need an external repository and somebody who builds the drivers and put them there. So, uh, so I could do something on free desktop or something that had that. Yes, or on on Elliot or okay. wherever. I should do that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I have one question for you. Who wants to be the new X maintainer <laughs> <laughs> for the next release cycle? Uh, actually, not me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ju just last comment. I completely support uh, BDL's stance on being aggressive in uploads. Uh, for the major package, we need to be more aggressive in uploads and following upstream. I definitely support that. I did that for Samba, mm -hmm. and I took a lot of risks for Samba. <coughs> uh, sometimes even uploading packages without testing them but following upstream so that we can give the best feedback we can give to upstream. We have like five or six branches in Samba just to be able to follow all upstream versions. So we sh really should do that for the major packages. And another comment, I just 
upgraded my driver to uh, whatever, 212 or something in five minutes. It res suspends, resume, it's just working. So please guys, do that now. Now, from experimental, you can do that. All your, all your driver, if you are Intel or whatever driver, do it and help the X maintainers to track this issue down. And please upload to a stable. Maybe don't do it right now so we don't flood the network. <laughs> All right, we have one, one more one minute question. Um, yeah, um, Swookie here. Uh, I suppose it's down the line. So um, I was just going to say, I'm an average user. I suspect there's a lot of people in my situation. Every so often I have something's wrong in X and I'd quite like to help, but I haven't faintest idea how it works and I find it very hard to work out how it works and it all seems to change from last time I looked and there's all these you know x this and x the other and dr something and thing I haven't and I always find it extremely difficult to work out how it fits together so I can say anything intelligent about which bit broke now I realize it's not a very helpful comment because there's not much <laughs> you, you can do about that but I, I, I suspect this is a common problem in terms of trying to do anything useful I find myself lost every time I look and just kind of go yeah, I think that's related to the comment that I made earlier, that we definitely need to have some sort of uh, go-to help page that can yeah. help people uh, figure out where to go to look. All right, let's thank the speaker again.